Hello everyone, this is Mumbo and welcome back to another episode on the Hermitcraft server. It's episode bonus! Today is a bit of a bonus episode of Hermitcraft. As you guys know, over the past week or so, well you definitely know, because I haven't stopped banging on about it, uh, I've been ill. I mentioned it a whole bunch of times in the previous episode of Hermitcraft, in fact I was watching back that episode of Hermitcraft after I'd finished editing it, because of course that's what you do, that's what you do once you finish editing a video, you watch it back, and I was sat there and I was like, Stop telling people that you're ill. They know you're ill. You said it in the first two minutes and then you repeated it about 15 times throughout the episode. They know you're ill. You don't have to keep reminding them. So I do apologize. I do apologize for doing that and I've just done it again. I've reminded you that I'm ill and there it is again. I feel like we're going to end up on an endless loop here. But yeah, I'm, I'm gradually on the mend. Uh, I was up. Well, I woke up at two o'clock in the morning this morning and haven't been to bed since. So it's been a very early start for me today, I, maybe I might start, this could be a new me, just waking up at 2 in the morning every morning. But yeah, it's been, it's been a rough, it's been a rough couple days, but as I say, gradually getting back into the swing of things, and I thought, one thing that I could do to fully get me back into it, is do just a bonus episode of Hermitcraft, where we can chill out, we can relax, we can chat, we can have some fun, do some Hermit crafty bits, and hopefully do a bunch of projects that I've been meaning to do for a while, and gather up some things that I've been meaning to gather for a while, without it being in like an actual Hermit Craft episode. Do you get what I mean? I think, I think you probably understand what I mean. Ooh! I can sleep in my new bed for the first time. So this is it. We are actually making use of the pirate ship. In fact, you know what? One quick thing that I want to do before we begin. This isn't this isn't how that episode is meant to be going. But one quick thing that I'm actually going to do before we begin is I'm going to take out that temporary bed that I've had in the farming area over by the mob farm for probably about the past 40 episodes. That thing needs to go. Let me fly. Just let me take off. Seriously! What on earth did we do before Elytra? I mean, I, everything feels so slow paced. Oh, that's probably because I don't have Depth Strider through. What's going on? I blame the boots. I'm blaming the boots. Anyway, the plan for these bonus episodes is kind of to have them a little bit more long form type episodes, I guess. So I watch, I listen to a lot of podcasts, I watch a lot of podcasts as well, and I really enjoy them, I like putting on in the background, I tend to put them on while I'm actually recording these Hermitcraft episodes, as well as listening to audiobooks as well. So I thought I would kind of create one, now it's not going to be like a two hour long monstrous episode, it's probably going to be more like 30, maybe 40 minutes, and as I say, it's just going to be chilled out, relatively chatty, we're going to do a few just general tasks that I can talk over, and and hopefully you find it enjoyable. Now before I begin, I just want to say obviously this is the first time I've ever done one of these things. So constructive feedback would be very, very helpful. Now don't just write in the comment section, this is boring, I'm bored of this episode, because that's not helpful in the slightest. A, it might not be your thing, as I say, usually speaking, my episodes are quite fast paced, whereas this one is going to be like a little bit more slowed down. But B, I, there's nothing that I can really take from that. So instead, uh, just let me know, hey, I'd rather you did this, or I'd rather you talk like this, or I'd rather you put this in the video, etc, etc, etc. You guys get the idea. Anyway, let's get down to business. So, as you guys know, over, I think it was in a recent episode of Hermitcraft, I think it was on the episode that came out on my birthday, actually, uh, I kind of briefly spoke about 2017, because 2017, for me, has been, it's been a crazy, crazy year. Just to think how crazy 2017 has been, uh, it's, it's bizarre, because it's one of those things that I was not expecting at this point in my life. You know, it's strange, when I first started YouTube, Minecraft had just begun to get really popular. So I started up a YouTube channel and Minecraft was becoming a thing. My Minecraft was becoming a thing that people were playing and I, I had started playing it obviously and it was really just starting to pick up some steam. I think, I think that's when the official release had just come out. No, it can't have been, 2012. I can't actually remember when the updates were but I know that relatively soon into me starting YouTube, 
I think that's when the Redstone update released. And obviously that's when the whole Redstone community really got into the swing of things and all of the furnaces kicked into gear and everyone was building Redstone contraptions all of a sudden. Everyone went over from building because people were building for ages and then suddenly all these new things got added into Redstone and everyone just hopped on over and was like, this, this is the stuff that's interesting. And I got very lucky. I've always said this, but I got very lucky with the time that I started up my YouTube channel because I kind of came in just as Redstone really did hit a surge and I was one of I was there was a, there was a redstone community at the time but I was one of the early ones which is strange because I still think of myself as a new guy I still think of myself as a new youtuber and I still think of myself as a new member of the minecraft community but I did get in at a time the redstone really was surging but realistically I didn't really know how long the YouTube thing was going to last I'm quite a sensible person I'm also quite a skeptical person in a way and I, you know, you, you have to you have to be realistic with yourself that YouTube is one of those things that it's not going to last forever. It's a real shame for me to say that <laughs> I'm not going to have this job for the rest of my life. I, I, I'm fairly, I'm like 99% certain that I'm not going to retire from making YouTube videos when I reach 70 years old. I'm not going to hang up my headphones and just be like, yeah, I'm, I'm done now. Uh, it's definitely going to finish off at some point before then. And when I first started out on YouTube, I didn't, I didn't actually expect it to last this long, which I know, as I say, there's not, there's not, <laughs> I guess it, it wasn't, it wasn't the best thinking by me. I, I should have been, I should have been more optimistic, but that's just how I am. I, I, I went into it and I was like, oh, this is probably going to last like a year. Like, I reckon people are, are going to watch me for about a year. You know, I'm growing really well at the minute, but they're going to watch me for about a year. And then it's all going to dry up. And I obviously, I, I was in college at the time and I had applied for university. I had a placement at university. I was like, oh, by the time I go to university, this whole thing will have dried up. And then I can go to university and, and get a real job. But here I am in 2017. 17, five years after my YouTube channel started and four years after things really started to kick off and it's doing better than ever I mean this this year 2017 has been the best year ever for my YouTube channel I've gained more subscribers than I ever have I, I mean I hit I hit I hit a million subscribers in 2016 and then we're here in 2017 at almost 2 million subscribers I don't think we're quite gonna put it off in, 28, in 2017, but 2018 is looking pretty hopeful. We have 60,000 subscribers to go, so hopefully at some point, maybe January, February, March, that's probably when we'll hit around about 2 million, which is insane. That is completely bonkers, because I remember in the early days of my YouTube channel, once again, just to hark back to the earlier stages of me as a YouTuber, uh, my mum once asked me, she was looking at YouTube, and this is when I just told her about my YouTube channel, because I kept it a secret. I kept my YouTube channel a secret from my mum until I hit about 20,000 subscribers. Uh, my mum just couldn't understand what I was, she, she just thought I was someone who played on the computer a lot, and I would record videos whenever she was out. So she'd leave the house for like two hours or something to do some shopping or go out with friends, and then I'd quickly just hop on and record a Redstone video real quick, and try my best to get it all edited and uploaded in that space of time so it's a little bit hectic but as I say yeah I, I kept it all a secret uh, but then afterwards when I had about 50,000 subscribers and everything was going well my mum asked me do you think you're gonna hit a million subscribers and I said I'm not the sort of YouTube channel that hits a million subscribers that's what I said to her I remember it uh, and that's why it was so mind-blowing to me that I hit a million but now I'm almost at two million it's completely mental so I do just want to extend out a massive thank you to everyone who has watched me and supported me throughout the time of me being on YouTube. Uh, it's been a it's been a crazy crazy experience, and it's opened up just so many doors and so many opportunities that I never really expected to kind of have open. I mean, I know that sounds strange, but like the, even things like going to events and being able to meet people that have travelled from all over the world to meet me, mad. Like that is totally totally mad. It's just, it's, I mean, when we went to, uh, Green and I, well, Green and I and a bunch of other YouTubers went to the, the Minecon Earth viewing party in London, and we met a kid there who had travelled from Israel, who I actually follow on Twitter now, and he's a really interesting kid, and he's working on some, some awesome stuff in Minecraft, like some seriously awesome stuff, but yeah, he said that he had travelled in from Israel, to come to this event, so that he could meet me and Green. that's crazy, just to think, that that sort of thing, like the bit, the people care that much about the things that I'm doing to want to travel halfway across the planet to just chat to me for a little while. 
I can't believe it. I honestly can't believe it. And I know I've I've kind of gone I've gone on a bit of a tangent here, but it's just it's something that I want to get off my chest. It's something that I want to talk about. It's something that I've always wanted to talk about, or at least over the past year or so, in kind of like a long form, so that I can properly discuss it and I can properly get all my thoughts off my chest, because that is crazy and. I never thought I'd be in this position. So I don't want to be the cliche YouTuber that keeps saying thank you to his viewers, but I have to say thank you ever so much to all of you because it, it means the world to me that you guys enjoy the content that I create. And I'm just so glad that you guys are giving me the opportunity to do this for a living. I mean, I get to play games for a living. Can you believe that? <laughs> it's crazy. But anyway, aside from the YouTube side of things, 2017 has been a really interesting year, as I say. Uh, obviously, the filming channel really did kick into gear, which has been, it's been a really nice, I guess, I don't really know how to describe it. I don't know how to describe what the filming channel is for me, but it's, it's almost like, ah, it's kind of like polar opposites to the Minecraft channel in that it's somewhere that I can go to get a bit of a, I guess, not creative release, because that's not the right word. But it's somewhere that, it's like an outlet. It's a, it's a different outlet. So obviously I make these Minecraft videos all day long, and I, I make them all the time. And then sometimes I just fancy trying something different and being creative and try my best to create nice looking films. And I've been trying to hone my skills on that and pick up new skills. And I think the turning point for me definitely was in early 2017 when I took on the mini documentary with Otter Surfboards. That really did, that that made me think, you know what, this is something that I actually, I do want to pursue. Uh, which kind of brings me on to what's going to be happening in 2018 because uh, we're going to be doing a lot more production related work. So as I mentioned on a recent episode of Hermitcraft, uh, I recently got myself a whole bunch of new camera equipment. Now, camera equipment is something that I've always loved and I, I got myself like a full insane setup with help from CVP. Now, CVP are a fantastic camera store in London and I just want to send a massive shout out to Philip at CVP as well because he has been just the most helpful guy on the planet, getting me in touch with everyone, sorting out products, giving me recommendations and everything like that. And if you are shopping at CVP and you need a hand, perhaps you want to ask some questions, speak to the team at CVP because all of them know what they're talking about. They all know what they're talking about. They know far more than, than anyone I've ever spoken to. So they're a super handy resource to have. But as I say, we, we now have a Red Scarlet W 5K camera. So that's a 5K resolution uh, cinema camera setup. We also have a bunch of lights. We've got a bunch of light modifiers, uh, all sorts of new grip equipment as well. And that's so that over 2018, we're going to be taking on a bunch of mini documentary gigs essentially so we're going to be doing some mini documentary work uh, we have a few lined up a few automotive related ones you guys know that i love cars i love classic cars and everything so we've got a few of those lined up uh we also have a few bits and pieces lined up with people like craftsmen so a bit like what i did with james otter uh he was a craftsman he made handmade wooden surfboards down in cornwall really interesting guy we're going to be taking on similar projects to that. So things like pottery people and blacksmiths and everything like that. We're going to be going down and just filming with them for a couple of days and they're going to talk through their story, what they do, what they do for a living, why they love it. And we're going to hopefully shoot some really nice looking footage and compile it together into a bunch of different mini documentaries that you guys will be able to watch on the filming channel, which is really exciting because that's kind of like a secondary passion of mine. It's something that's recently flared up and I'm loving the process. And at the minute, I'm just kind of, I'm honing my skills. I'm getting Vicky to help me out with all sorts of lighting tests. You will have seen them on Twitter and Instagram as well. I keep setting up lighting scenarios in my kitchen and we're lighting people in different ways. So I'm super excited for them and hopefully they're going to end up looking really amazing. But then also aside from the mini documentary work, I'm also going to be doing a lot of travel related things as well. So as I've mentioned, I think a couple of times now, I'm planning on going to the Philippines, uh, Bali as well. I'm going to be going to Bali and also Tuscany. Now Tuscany, I'm technically going for a wedding. <laughs> That's, uh, I'm going for Vicky's cousin's wedding. I hope I've got that correct. Um, but there is a chance, I mean, we're going to be staying there for a week, so I think we're going to be doing a little bit of filming there as well. So there's going to be all sorts of things going on. We're also doing mini documentaries in the Philippines because for those of you who don't know, uh, Vicky is from the Philippines. She's half Filipino uh, and she was born in the Philippines. She has a lot of family in the Philippines. And we're gonna be, the one, the one mini documentary that I am going to announce is that her uncle, Uncle Boy, is a spear fisherman. A spear fisherman in the Philippines lives in lives in like really rural Philippines and just lives off the fish that he catches and also sells the fish as well. 
It really sounds amazing. I cannot wait to get out there and I cannot wait to film with them because that is going to be seriously, seriously interesting. Um, so that that's kind of the plan as far as trips are concerned. There's also going to be a few other events as well, things like Minecraft events and everything. It's all, it's all There's going to be a lot of travelling, essentially, which is something that I've kind of missed out on in 2017. I did a lot of UK travelling because, of course, we had the camper van, so I was travelling to Cornwall a lot and doing a lot of surfing, and we did a few trips... Well, we went up to the Lake District. I suppose I went up to the Lake District with Creative North, those documentary filmmakers as well, and then the camper van broke down. That was a trip from hell. That really was a trip from hell because the camper van broke down on the way up there, which obviously meant that I no longer had accommodation because I was sleeping in the camper van. So I no longer had accommodation, so I had to buy myself a tent. Well, I slept in their car. They hired a car. What the, the, I have explained this before, but I'll quickly run you through it. So they hired, they, they came in from Sweden. We were going to meet each other in the Lake District. I was coming up in the camper van. They had hired a car. They had a tent. And I broke down on the way up there. They then drove down. They arrived from Sweden, drove down, met me on the hard shoulder of the motorway, picked me up. The camper van just was completely shot, so it had to be sent back home. We then traveled around in this tiny, tiny little car with 10 ton of camera equipment. I slept in it on the first night, bought a tent the second night, and then we slept on the side of a mountain, uh, which was amazing. And then on the way home, I missed my flight. So I had to sleep on the airport floor, which was not fun. So all in all, it was a bit of a hectic trip, but that was amazing. And I'm hoping to do more stuff like that in 2018 as well. Basically, 2018 is going to be a really interesting year. Hopefully, I can just continue to do what I've been doing this year because 2017 has probably been the best year of my life, both for the experiences and also just for the Minecraft channel. I... it. I, I'm one of those people, you know, it makes me so happy to see how well the Minecraft channel has gone it, because it's something that I personally, I know how much time and effort I put into it and to see those, to see that reciprocated by you guys and to see all of your positive comments and all the new people joining the, the, the channel and everything like that, it, it really does mean the world to me. So as I say, hopefully 2018 continues to be just as positive uh, and I'm looking forward to bringing you plenty of awesome content both on the Minecraft channel and also on the filming channel as well, which brings me on to the final point, which is that what would you like to see? Like, what would you what would you like to see more of in 2018? I'm getting a little bit reflective here, looking back the, throughout the years and everything, uh, and I feel like this is a good question that I should ask every now and again. It's just you, you're the ones that watch the content. What would you like to see more of on the channel, be it collaboration work, be it more building related videos as opposed to just redstone videos, maybe, I don't know, you guys have got the creative ideas, so chuck them down in the comment section, I'd love to hear them. Right, so that is that. We have finished the first one hour mining session of today's Hermitcraft bonus episode. I hope that you enjoyed that little chat right there. Uh, let's see what sort of resources we managed to get. I think it was a lot of redstone. We managed to get quite a bit of redstone, which is good because we've been kind of running low on the stuff. But also, 11 diamond ore and 22 diamonds. 25 diamonds. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Oh no, because my silk touch pickaxe broke in the process of the mining session, I can no longer get ender chest back. Oh, that's a pain. So, I've just placed in all of those items into all my chests back at the base, and now it is time to head off towards the mega, mega, mega wither skeleton farm. I think I want to try my best to see how many wither skulls I can get within one hour. Yeah, it's up here. So, for the second half of the video, I thought it would be a good idea to do some form of question and answer session, because, you know, I don't tend to do question and answer sessions that much. I've done them occasionally in time-lapse chats recently, but I don't really get the opportunity to answer questions in depth. I mean, I, I tend to do time-lapse chats for a maximum of about 2 minutes and 30 seconds, which doesn't really give me much room for elaboration. So uh, I thought I would take the opportunity today to just try my best to answer a whole bunch of your questions and go right in deep with them. So the question that comes first is from Snowcraft8 who has asked, why don't you play on servers like Hypixel? Now, I kind of I kind of covered this in a video I did recently called Why Is Minecraft Fun? If you haven't seen it, I would suggest checking it out. I think it was a really good video. Uh, I put a lot of time and effort into it. And in that, I basically spoke about why I find Minecraft interesting. And the main reason why I enjoy Minecraft as a game is because it's just... 
It's just creativity. Like it's it's a place where I can just be creative without having to worry about anything. I don't have to worry about physics particularly. I mean, there's some physics involved in Minecraft, but for example, you know, I can have flying structures if I really want to, and I did that on Hermitcraft season four. Uh, I don't have to worry about investing lots of money in resources <laughs> because obviously, if you want to be creative in real life, you want to make a sculpture or something like that, or a giant underwater ocean base, you best have a lot of money. If, you, if you're building bases underwater in real life and houses and things, you're gonna need a lot, a lot of money. But as I say, even in general, if you're talking being creative in real life, for example, with the filming channel stuff, I mean, a lot of that is creative and that has cost me a ton of money. So you, you need physical resources to actually take on projects like that in the real world. With Minecraft, you don't have to worry about any of that. You can literally just, you can pay for the game once, you can boot up Minecraft, and then you have just raw creativity right there and you can take on any projects that you really want to. So the reason that I don't play on servers like Hypixel is just because I don't really get the opportunity to be creative there. I mean, PvP, I can understand why people find PvP games fun and I can understand the competitive nature, and I do play, I do play some, I've recently got back into some games, I, I, I recently got myself an Xbox One to play with my friends, because, you know, all my friends have Xbox Ones, so sometimes we get together and we all play Xboxes together in the same room, that's the only way that I really play with friends when it comes to gaming casually. I, I refuse to sign into Xbox Live and get the headset and everything like that and talk over the headset. That's not how I do it. You need multiple screens in one room. You need like a pizza or some form of really bad food that you can then consume whilst playing games with your friends. That's really the way it should be. And that's the way it's been for me uh, lately. And I've been enjoying playing games like Call of Duty 4 Remastered. For those of you who don't know, I really used to love Call of Duty 4. I actually used to have YouTube videos of Call of Duty 4 back in the day. So I've been playing Call of Duty 4 Remastered. I've been playing a little bit of Fortnite Battle Royale, I think that's the name of it, which is fun but tricky. I'm, I'm way out of practice of that sort of thing, so I end up dying quite a bit. Overcooked, Overcooked is a fun game to play with your friends. And also uh, Battlefield, Battlefield 1. The, the World War one. I don't know the names of any of these games, but I find them very enjoyable. So I, I tend to leave the player v player stuff to games that are dedicated to it, is essentially what I'm saying here. Because, you know, the fighting, fighting aspect of Battlefield 1, for me personally anyway, is far better than the fighting aspect of Minecraft. So I just, I do all the fighting stuff in that game and I leave the creative stuff to Minecraft. Because you can't be creative in Battlefield 1, but you can be creative in Minecraft. So that tends to be how I play. The next question comes from a familiar face, Mr. Grian, who has asked me, would I like to do a guest appearance on the Evo server? Um, yeah, I, mean, I don't see why I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't mind just popping on and seeing what everyone's up to. It would be quite interesting to see... Yeah, it would be quite interesting to see what it's like in like old versions of Minecraft. In Minecraft, I think it's beta, I think they now have... Did he say they now have powered rails? I have no clue what update that would be, but yeah, no, that that would be good fun. So for sure, if, if that's something that you want to sort out, I wouldn't mind popping in and just seeing what everyone is up to. Uh, but the next question comes from Asif MC, who said, what did you want to be as an adult when you were a child? Now, this is a really interesting question. And the reason that it's interesting is because I've wanted to be a lot of things in my life. So when I was much, much younger, I wanted to be a filmmaker, funnily enough. Uh, I wanted to be someone who made videos for a living and that's because I used to enjoy making animations. So I used to make animations in paint. I, I used to draw something out in paint and it they were not good. Can I just say that? Can I get that off straight away? Uh, they were not good. I used to draw them in paint and then I used to put them frame by frame into Windows Movie Maker. So I used to create these things in Windows Movie Maker, which is strange because that's why, so I've recently been trying to teach Vicky how to edit videos and she has no concept of like a timeline. So the, the thought of putting clips heads to tails, like down a timeline, completely alien to her. She doesn't understand how it works and I've had to really explain from the ground up. Whereas for me, I mean, I've been, I've been, doing, I've been doing video editing ever since I was probably about four, maybe five, I've been editing together little videos. So a timeline is kind of like second nature to me and just 
navigating some form of video editing software is something that I've always done. For example, when I saved up and bought my iMac, when I was, and you know what, I'm jumping some steps, so let's, let's do this in a linear audio. So uh, that was kind of between four and seven. That's what I wanted to be. I wanted to be, make, uh, I wanted to be a filmmaker uh, and like an animator. And then I wanted to be, when I got my braces, I wanted to be an orthodontist. I just thought my orthodontist was really cool. He was from Australia and he was a really nice guy and he had an awesome accent and I just thought all orthodontists must be this cool. So I want to be an orthodontist as well. So that were, that took me through until about 11 or 12. Then I wanted to be an architect. I don't know where that came from really, but I just wanted to be an architect. I thought that'd be good fun. Uh, I think I, I played a lot of Sims back in those days, so maybe that could be part of it. I enjoyed building houses in Sims, so I wanted to be an architect. Then from there, I realized that I'm not really that artsy particularly. I couldn't do like the sketching of the houses or anything. So instead I thought I'd move into civil engineering. And then from there I decided civil engineering, I actually prefer the electrical side. So I was gonna go into elect electrical engineering. And then I thought, you know what? I actually prefer the electronic side of engineering so I was going to be an electronic engineer and then when I was at the open days for the universities that I was going to I kept getting sidetracked into the computer science courses so then I was going to be a computer science that that's that's kind of the progression of my jobs that I wanted to be and that literally took me up to about the age of 20 so at about 20 I still wanted to be a computer scientist I wanted to do computer programming and everything like that and now I don't actually know. When you and YouTube eventually dies off uh, and ends, I don't. I have no clue what I'd like to do. I, in theory, I'd like to run some some form of production company. That would be brilliant fun. Or I don't know. I genuinely have absolutely no clue. Absolutely no idea. Uh, but I don't think computer science is on the list anymore. I'm pretty out of practice with it. And also, it doesn't fire my buttons as much as it used to. I haven't done any like hobby programming for probably about a year, maybe two years now. So yeah, really, I'm clueless at this point in my life. It's like one of the first times I haven't had a goal career that I'm actually working towards, which is a tiny bit on the scary side. But anyway, going back to my, because I kind of breezed over this. So when I was around about, well, between, I've always loved bikes. So when I was from about the age of eight to about the age of 16, I was heavily into BMXing. I used to go down the skate park pretty much every single day. And then from there, I actually got myself a camera and I got myself an iMac. And this follows on from the movie maker thing because as I say, I got myself an iMac and I got myself Final Cut Pro. And that's when I really started working hard on actually making videos. So an interesting thing, this is a question that comes up quite often as well, uh, is, where did you start making videos? Like, what made you actually start making videos? And the answer is, is that it's actually in BMXing. I used to make videos of my friends BMXing. I then used to edit them together. And then there wasn't really YouTube back then. It wasn't really as popular as it is now. So we just used to email them to each other. I would literally email a BMX edit to my friend. I don't know how I hosted it, I can't remember. I might have put it on YouTube, but it wasn't, I wasn't thinking of it as uploading it to YouTube. I was like, oh, I just need it, I need to put it on YouTube so that my friends can see it. So I, it, would go, it, would, it would be sent to all the friends and then we'd all email it around and we'd all send it to each other on Facebook as well. And that's kind of what I used to do. So I used to, uh, to make BMXing videos. And I have to say, I, just the other day, I was looking back at some old BMX edits that I used to watch back when I was younger. And there's one called Dunkirk by Mutiny Bike Co, which is a fantastic BMXing video that has massively influenced still my music tastes today. I absolutely love every single one of the songs in there. It involves the Black Angels, one of my favorite bands, Black Rebel Motorcycle Club, and also the Black Keys. <laughs> so three bands with a black in the title but those are three of my favorite bands and I learned all of them from that one video but also just a filmmaking style was amazing and it really inspired me and I think that's part of what led me to actually creating these videos um, but as I say yeah so I had this iMac I had Final Cut Pro and throughout my entire life I've been editing videos in some way so it is funny that I've ended up being a YouTuber making videos for a living I guess it's something that I subconsciously subconsciously was working towards throughout my entire life without really realizing it. It's really odd. And the final question before my voice totally gives up on me is from Palindrome who asked, how's the memory thingy going? Uh, I'll be totally honest. I have not, I have not done it for a long time. I kind of regret mentioning that. 
in a video. So uh, for those of you who have very good memories, funnily enough, you might remember me saying that, oh, I've, I've read this book. It was called Walking with Einstein, I think. Yeah, Walking with Einstein. Fairly certain. And it's all about memory and how good memory can be. Now, I would highly suggest checking out this book. Uh, I'll put a link to it down in the description through Audible because that's where I listen to it. It's a brilliant, brilliant book. And of course, if you use my link, you can get it on the house for free from me. I would highly suggest reading it. Um, and it's all about memory and how you can train your memory to be much better using memory palaces and different techniques. And I did it for a while and I memorized like a stupid number of random words that I got from a random word generator. And I just, I memorized them within about an hour I think it was like a hundred and I, I memorized them in order I could recite them forwards and backwards uh, it didn't take that long and then I tried it like a month later to remember them and I could still remember all a hundred so I was like oh that worked cool and then I never did it again <laughs> uh, just because I don't think it's that useful I can't think of a time I know that sounds stupid because memory is incredibly important but it's such a specific form of memory that it's not useful <laughs> unless I want to remember I don't know people's phone numbers off the top of my head yeah it didn't really seem to come in handy but who knows I might pick it up again in the future I still got all of the techniques in my head so uh, we might have to look out for that one but no for the time being I, ha I haven't done any memory challenges anyway let's pop back onto the Hermitcraft server so there we go in that one hour session we managed to get ourselves six with a skeleton skulls which isn't too bad I assume we also managed to get all of this coal as well. I didn't actually check the coal supplies before I started, but there was a lot of coal dropping. How many bones are there in here? Holy mackerel! Wow! And 15 blaze rods. I'm taking those. And magma creams. We need magma creams because obviously I don't have silk touch on my pickaxe. Oh, it's, it's not magma creams, is it? You know... I'm a bit concerned. I've been playing this game now for like five, six, maybe seven years. How do I still not know 90% of the crafting recipes? It's insane. Anyway, the farm is now switched off. That's why these doors are open. So we can head off without breaking this thing. That's the thing that I'm terrified of. Do you remember when I had to re rebuild this thing? <laughs> that was not fun in the slightest. So everything is switched off. I'm just going to triple check that those slime machines aren't moving. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. And I think I'm actually going to sign off today's bonus Hermitcraft episode. I really do hope that you enjoyed it. It was a slightly more relaxed one just to get me back into the swing of things with recording now that my voice is beginning to come back in some way, shape or form. So if you did enjoy it, please sure to that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later. Oh, and as per usual, I mean, do I even have to say it anymore? Probably not. Just check out the latest film on the filming channel. Link will be on the end screen. Thank you.